The Netherlands authorities have allowed Ukraine to use F-16 fighters to strike military targets in the Russian Federation. This was announced on October 17 by the country's defense minister Ruben Breckelmans at a meeting of NATO defense ministers, which was broadcast on the alliance's official website. The Minister of Defense recalled that soldiers of the armed forces of Ukraine are already using the first batch of F-16 fighters in their airspace. He also pointed out that the Netherlands has always insisted that Ukraine comply with international law. International law does not stop at the border or 100 kilometers from the border, Ed Breckelman said. Since the beginning of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, the Netherlands has been actively supporting the country. In early October, Ukraine received its first F-16 fighter jets from the Netherlands. At the same time, an initiative regarding drones was announced. In the summer, the Netherlands also announced plans to transfer a Patriot air defense missile system to Ukraine in cooperation with another country. The Netherlands will allocate an additional 271 million euros for military aid to Ukraine, which will be spent on artillery shells, announces Dutch Prime Minister Dick Schoof on Twitter. According to him, Denmark, Czechia, and the Netherlands are determined to continue their joint support for Ukraine against Russian aggression. He also reminded that about a year ago, an initiative for ammunition supplies was created, and today a significant step forward has been taken. We will supply more large caliber artillery shells. For this, the Netherlands is allocating 271 million euros for artillery shells. This will help Ukraine with ammunition supplies in 2025 and encourage the European defense industry to expand further," wrote Schuff. Australia will give 49 of its aging M1A1 Abrams tanks to Ukraine months after Kiev requested the redundant fleet, Defense Minister Richard Murleys said Thursday. The fleet of US-made M1A1 tanks are valued at 245 million Australian dollars, he said. They will be replaced in Australia by a next-generation M1A2 fleet. Merleys had said in February that giving Ukraine the tanks as they were phased out was not on his government's agenda. Merleys said on Thursday he did not regard the donation as a backflip. We talk with the Ukrainian government consistently around how best we can support them, Merleys told Australian Broadcasting Corporation Ukraine's ambassador to Australia, Vassil Myroshnikenko, did not comment on opposition lawmakers' criticisms that the tanks should have been donated earlier. This is a very timely, a very substantial and very fit-for-purpose announcement, Myroshnikenko said. The tanks bring the total value of Australia's military assistance to Ukraine since the start of the Russian invasion in 2023 to over 1.3 billion Australian dollars. This is a very significant contribution. It's $245 million worth of uh, defence material, 49 Abrams tanks. This is going to significantly boost the mobile fire capability of uh, the Ukrainian armed forces. We, we talk with uh, the Ukrainian government uh, consistently around how best we can support them. They, for example, were seeking integrated air and missile defence, and, and that has been a feature of the packages that we've announced this year. Um, you know, I announced a package of $250 million worth of support in July when I was at NATO, $100 million when I was in Ukraine earlier in the year. Uh, we, we, we look at uh, the material that we have, uh, it, its effectiveness, how the, the shape that it's in, to be frank, um, how whether it would be able to make a difference, whether it can be sustained and maintained so that it can be kept in the fight. And the Abrams tanks, you know, fit all of those criteria, and we're really pleased that we're in a position to be able to give them to Ukraine. I think the point to make here is that uh, there is a lot at stake, obviously for Ukraine, but for the world. I mean, Ukraine is fighting for its own country, but in so many ways, Ukraine is really on the front line of fighting for the global rules-based order, uh, which stands in the interests of uh, certainly Australia, but countries around the world. I mean, we cannot allow to stand 
the idea that a large country can invade a smaller na neighbour, not by reference to international law, but by reference to power and might. Uh, and so we stand with the international community in terms of supporting Ukraine, and we will continue to do that. Uh, this is a very timely, a very substantial and very fit for purpose uh, announcement. Uh, as you know, tanks are an essential part of the land defenses and the front line currently is extending over a thousand kilometers long. So those tanks will be there uh, to help us defend ourselves and they will be saving many lives. So that's, that's a significant contribution to our defense. We respect the decision of the government. It was not an easy one, and I'm very happy that it was a positive one. And uh, Ukrainians are very grateful. We'll never forget Australian support. This, uh, the tanks will contribute to, to the further deterrent, but mostly we, we still need to achieve the end of this war. But uh, definitely we need those tanks now. Uh, our soldiers have been already trained uh, using some of those tanks which were provided earlier by the US government. And uh, it will be a serious contribution to our military capability.